entitled, quote, this is the clever quote, clever title, quote, did the Soviet Union invade Poland in September 1939? The answer, no, it did not, end quote. You can read it with 17 web pages of evidence and documentation on my home page, or an abbreviated, somewhat abbreviated and updated version in my new book. I learned a lot. For one thing, I learned that the pact was not an alliance, although it's often called an alliance. I learned that the Soviet Union did not invade Poland in September 1939. And what's more, that all the Allies agreed at that time that it didn't. I learned that the Soviet Union was the only country that acted properly in the pre-war period. That's the only conclusion I could honestly reach. I discussed this question at length in Blood Lies, uh, my forthcoming book that just came out, and Timothy Snyder's Bloodlands. Uh, Ten, the Katyn Massacre. I'll say a little bit about this. In April 1943, Nazi German authorities claimed that they had discovered thousands of bodies of Polish officers shot by, the Soviet, by Soviet officials in 1940 near the Katyn Forest near Smolensk in western Russia. The Nazi propaganda machine organized a huge campaign around this alleged discovery. After the Soviet victory at Stalingrad in February 1943, it was obvious to everyone that unless something happened to split the Allies, Germany would inevitably lose the war. The Nazis' obvious aim was to drive a wedge between the Western Allies and the Soviet Union. The Soviet government, headed by Joseph Stalin, vigorously denied the German charge when the Polish government in exile, right here in London, right, uh, always ferociously anti-communist and anti-Russian, collaborated with the Nazi propaganda effort, the Soviet government broke diplomatic relations with it. That was in April of 43. During the Cold War, the Western capitalist countries supported the Nazi version, which was now promoted by the anti-communist Poles. The Soviet Union and its allies continued to blame the Germans until, in 1991 to 1992, Mikhail Gorbachev and then Boris Yeltsin stated that the Soviet Union and Joseph Stalin had indeed shot the Poles. At the beginning of the year 2013, which is 18, 16 months ago, something like that, I learned about archaeological findings at a German mass murder site in Ukraine. As I had been following the dispute over the Katyn massacre for many years, I soon discovered, recognized the implications of these findings. They provide material evidence that the Soviet Union could not have shot the 14,800 or 22,000 or whatever number of Polish officers who were POWs in 1940. The discoveries in the mass grades of Volodymyr Volinsky, Ukraine, constitute a lethal blow to the official version of the Katyn massacre. That is something that should interest all of us. Katyn has been the most famous crime alleged against Stalin and the Soviet government. It has hitherto also been the crime most firmly grounded in documentary evidence. For example, it is unlike the alleged Holodomor, the supposed deliberate the starvation by Stalin of millions of Ukrainians in the famine of 1932-33, for which no evidence has ever been found. Katyn has been the best proven crime of Stalinism, and it's a lie. All right, conclusion. In this talk, I've only touched on a few of the important events of Soviet history in the 1930s. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to say something about objectivity in the attempt to discover the truth. Almost all books and articles published today about Soviet history of the Stalin period are framed and therefore controlled by what I call the anti-Stalin paradigm. In Western academic discussion, it is obligatory, required, that a researcher come to conclusions that confirm the anti-communist portrayal, uh, portrayal of Stalin as a vicious, evil, killer, and dictator, and the Soviet Union as a site of mass murder and cruelty. If you are unwilling to put your research within this biased framework, you simply cannot have an academic career at all. I have been told by two fine researchers in Soviet history, researchers who are not leftists but who strive to be objective, that no book that is not hostile to Stalin can be published by an academic publisher. That is certainly true in the West, and I believe it to be true in Russia as well, or at least nowadays, a few years ago, there were a few exceptions, but I haven't seen any in a few years. Let me put this another way. If you were in the field of social hi Soviet history, if you taught Soviet history in a history department anywhere in the West, you could not do the research I do. If you did, you could not be published in the standard journals or by mainstream academic publishers, and you would soon not be in the field of Soviet history anymore because you wouldn't have a job. <laughs> that is why my position is unusual. I teach in an English department. My academic livelihood does not depend in any way on my research into Soviet history. 
this is what I have to offer. And a lot of people around the world think that it is important, not just people on the left, such as all of you here. The anti-communists also think it's important, and they don't like it. A lot of people on the right do not want the truth about the history of the communist movement in the Soviet Union during the Stalin years to come to light. They want to continue to demonize it, to compare it to Hitler and fascism, and to lie about it. And that's what they do, not only passively through their point of view or bias, but actively by deliberately falsifying the evidence, sources, and history. Marx and Engels wrote that, quote, the proletariat has nothing to lose but its chains. By that, I assume they meant that we have no sacred cows, nothing we refuse to subject to critical scrutiny. We want to cast aside all illusions and falsehoods. Only the truth shall make us free if we are against all exploitation of man by man, if we are the international working class. Marx's favorite slogan was de omnibus dubitandum, question everything, and your own preconceived ideas and biases above all others. If you want to learn the truth, that's what you must do. Moreover, it is what every bourgeois detective in every detective story knows. As Sherlock Holmes used to say, another Londoner, right, like you are, <laughs> keep your mind free of precipitate conclusions. Get the facts before you form your hypothesis. Hypotheses. Be ready to abandon a, pi an a hypothesis that does not explain the established facts. If you don't do this, if you don't try to discover the truth from the outset, then you are not going to stumble upon it by accident along the way, and what you will find will not be the truth. That is what I try hard to do. None of the demonizers of Stalin and the Soviet Union, the anti-communist experts on the history of the communist movement, make any attempt to be objective. They do not discover the truth then because they don't want to do so. They want to write propaganda with footnotes, and that's what their works are. 